Welcome back to Power and Politics. A controversial soccer game between Canada and Iran set for next month is now off. Canada soccer canceled the match after a week of blowback from politicians and the families of the victims of the downed Flight 752. Now, Iran wants the organization to pay up for calling it down. The CBC's Ashley Burke is on the story here in Ottawa. She's been reporting on it all week. Ashley, good to have you back with us. Uh, let's talk about this decision, and, and my understanding is you have some new, uh, a new statement from Canada Soccer on the issue. Well, Vashi, this decision comes amid mounting controversy and growing calls to call off the mat, both by the public but also by politicians. And it wasn't until just moments ago that Canada Soccer explained why it's now backtracking on a decision it originally defended. Originally, more than a week ago, the organization had said that it believed in the power of sport to bring together people from different backgrounds and political beliefs. Now, a statement we just received uh, has a, a change in tone and says, quote, over the past week, the untenable, untenable geopolitical situation of hosting Iran became significantly divisive, and in response, the match was canceled. While we consider the external factors in selecting the optimal opponent in our original decision-making process, we strive to do better in moving forward. The statement also says that Canada Soccer, Soccer is going to be conducting a, what they call a thorough review, and that they'll be consulting stakeholders moving forward when they're selecting teams, as well that they're looking for a new opponent and they will be refunding people tickets. Now, this comes after a backlash, as you mentioned, and the most vocal group were the victims of flight PS752, who lost loved ones when that plane was down two years ago in Tehran by Iran's revolutionary Guard Corps, um, killing everyone on board, including more than 138 people with ties to Canada. Experts have said that in Iran, politics and uh, and uh, politics and sports they are intertwined, and that the IRGC does have ties to that team. So there are concerns about it, about them coming to Canada. Yeah, can you drill down on that a bit for our audience? Because I think the the defense that we've heard is obviously like this is sports, not politics, right? There's a difference, and and, and in fact, maybe there's like a middle ground when it comes to sports, even if there there isn't one between between governments. Why have people been upset about that? Well, my colleague Nahayat Tazush and I have been reporting about that connection and that experts say uh, that the RGC does have ties to this game. And, and one example in particular is that the head of Iran's soccer team just last, last month was photographed at a party standing uh, one person next to um, someone who's who's someone who's wanted by the FBI in connection to allegedly trying to uh, go in a plot to, to kidnap a number of international targets, including three Canadian citizens. And adding to the controversy is the money around this game. We've also reported that the head of Iran's team said that $400,000 was expected to be paid to the team for this match making them a profit on a friendly game for the first time in more than two decades. Canada Soccer has not confirmed or denied that number, but did say that it's normal in international soccer to pay a fee to visiting teams. Uh, but, but tonight, the Deputy Minister of Sport in Iran tweeted that he's now going to be seeking $10 million in damages from Canada Soccer for breaking this agreement. Canada Soccer has not yet responded to that, though, and they haven't done any interviews since we've been requesting them for more than a week. Okay, uh, I guess we will wait and see what happens there. Ashley, I really appreciate your reporting as well as Nahayat's on this. Thanks so much. That's uh, the CBC's Ashley Burke. In just moments, we are going to take a, a look at a different angle on this story, and that is that uh, actually Ukraine has uh, tweeted out, the new ambassador there has tweeted out, ambassador to Canada, that Ukraine could take Iran's place. Uh, I th do we have the guests ready? Okay, I do. I do have someone to talk to about that. His name is Andrey uh, uh, Bukvich, rather. He's the charge d'affaires uh, here uh, for Ukraine at the embassy in Ottawa. Hi, Mr. Bukvich. Good to see you again. Uh, hello. How are you? Good, thank you. I just want to read the tweet from the ambassador designate for our audience really quickly. The Ukrainian team is ready to play, she writes, and $400,000 could go for humanitarian needs of Ukrainians affected by Russia's war. Tell me a little bit about the thinking here and uh, why your embassy weighed in once you heard that the game was now being cancelled. Uh, well, for a while now, our embassy has been trying to organize an exhibition games in Canada. Ukrainian teams like Dynamo Kyiv, uh, Shakhtar Donetsk have a lot of them in Europe for fundraising for Ukraine. So, and uh, our national soccer team will be honored to visit Canada after all. So, ambassador designate uh, has already got a go from Ukrainian Soccer Association and all respected authorities. 
So it's now only up to a Canadian Soccer Association. And have you or your colleagues heard anything from them? Uh, no, no. This is uh, just a very fresh news. Only today, Ambassador Designate has all the uh, permission from Ukraine. We have not yet officially requested uh, Canada Soccer Association, but uh, they are our neighbors. They're not far from the embassy. I'm happy to walk there and ask them if they, if they are ready. I want to make sure our viewers understand that, uh, you know, Ukraine certainly uh, has, a, has a connection to Canada in the loss of those victims on uh, Flight 752. Eleven Ukrainians, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, also lost their lives then. And Ukraine itself has been very much involved in the investigation. When you heard this game was going to be played, before we knew it, was going, it ended up being cancelled, what, what were your thoughts? Uh... Well, uh, as for investigation process uh, on uh, hitting down the flight PS752, we are working to the, together with our international partners, including Canada, uh, to bring to justice all those who are involved on Iranian side. Uh, we are very committed and we are trying our best to move forward with investigation. Uh, unfortunately, we don't see the adequate level of cooperation on Iranian side, uh, though they, they would have to follow the Montreal Convention uh, in, the, in this regard, for example. Uh, but basically, uh, getting back to the idea of the match, I think it's up to Canada to make a decision with whom to play. Uh, my only comment would be the exhibition game. Another uh, word for it is a friendly match. And we think uh, when it comes to special partnership between Canada and Ukraine, the game with the Ukrainian national team would definitely uh, be friendly and uh, would, uh, if you wish, would be in spirit friendly, not only declared, but in spirit as well. I understand what you mean. My, my colleague Ashley reported on some of the, Ashley Berg reported on some of the family members of the victims of that flight being upset that Iran had been invited here. Do you sympathize with their position? Absolutely. We are in close contact with association. They've been very helpful in providing uh, us uh, and international investigation team with a lot of information, which was uh, uh, very instrumental in trying to understand what happens uh, when Ukrainian flight was down. Uh, we are trying to support them as much as possible, and I personally uh, took part in several uh, events they uh, organized to commemorate all those who died in that uh, terrible uh, catastrophe. Well, I hope that you'll uh, update us when, uh, when there's some response uh, on, on the prospect of the game. If you don't mind, Mr. Bookfitch, before I let you go, though, I, I do want to ask you, just about some of the latest developments as far as Russia's war on, on Ukraine goes. Uh, and in particular, uh, the news today that Russia's economy appears to be faring, you know, better than expected given the, the sheer weight of the international sanctions placed on it, interest rates they, that were slashed today, and the ruble seems to be doing quite well. What does that say to you? Well, uh, please disregard the official Russian statistics. It's no way reflect the real situation in Russian economy. Uh, big uh, multinational corporations, uh, foreign investors are fleeing the country. Mm -hmm. They are cutting. And I think in a couple of months, we'll see the real picture, how the Russian economy looks like. But the bad thing is that uh, uh, Russia still gets a lot of revenues uh, from selling uh, its oil and gas to Europe and international markets. Uh, since February, Russia got nearly uh, $64 billion, which definitely makes them in a good position to procure and manufacture weapons, unless uh, international community will be united in imposing even more sanctions, including embargo on Russian uh, oil. This is a very important step to be taken by our European partners. And I think it will be very important and even uh, when it comes to Canada and uh, back to soccer uh, match, it's a very symbolic that in both trage tragedies uh, with the Ukrainian flight in, in this war, uh, Canada and Ukraine are standing together. Uh, the situation on, uh, on the ground in Ukraine uh, with this Russian is still uh, horrendous. 
just today, Ukrainian uh, city, one million city Kharkiv, was shelled by Russian artillery again. The result is eight civilians dead and 17 wounded. Uh, though I've heard uh, and seen many atrocities by Russian so far, but I was shocked by this very case. A young family in Kharkiv was walking down the street and the father was holding a five month baby in his arms. Uh, and when they hit, when they shell, uh, when, they sh when they were shelled, the, the shocking wave simply uh, take away the baby. And this is terrible. This is what happens in Ukraine uh, all the time. As we talk right now, the sirens alarming about the airstrikes are across Ukraine in all regions. Mr. Bookfish, I'll, Bookfish rather, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thanks for uh, sharing that information with us. I, I do appreciate it as always. Thank you. Andre Bukvich is the charge d'affaires for Ukraine here in Canada. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.